um, six. 6.31, 6.31 p.m. Uh, so uh, in the absence of a board chair, uh, <laughs> I will call the meeting to order on behalf of the Regional uh, School District Day, um, Board of Education. Uh, we're going to start off with a roll call. Um, Carrie Fralino. Carrie Fralino Marlboro. Uh, Joe Coletti. Joe Coletti Hebron. Uh, Mike Sharon. Mike Sharon Hebron. Uh, Kristen Erlinson. Kirsten Ferenson, Heather. Uh, Gabe. Gabe Marks, Hebron. Heather. Heather Summer, Hebron. Um, Pam. Pam Farrington, Marlboro. Uh, Mike. Michael Boyer, Hebron. Um, Amy. Amy Romanchuk, Marlboro. Drew. Drew Golfin, Marlboro. And Scott. Scott Soya, Andover. Wonderful. Uh, stand, please stand for joining the Stanford Pledge of Allegiance. We have a flag back there. I pledge allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, I just, the, the next agenda item is just simply a welcome and introduction to the board members. I know we just did this during uh, roll call. Uh, but I would like to welcome our new board members to the Board of Ed for Region 8, uh, uh, Michael, and how do you say it? I want to make Bollier. Bollier. All right. Wonderful. Uh, Amy Romanchuk, Drew Golfin, and Scott Soyette. I've had the chance to meet with a few of you already, and I look forward to the opportunity to sit down with the ones I've not had a chance to meet with yet, and I'm very excited to work with you and the others on the board. Um, next on our agenda is item number four, which is the election of officers. Uh, and we are going to do this in accordance with policy 9130. The first officer position is the election of the board chair. And at this time, I'm going to open up uh, the floor for nominations for the board chair. Uh, I'd like to nominate Heather Summer, the board chair. And is there a second? I would like to second that. Seconded by Joe. Uh, at this time, are there any other nominations for the position of Board of Education Chair? I would like to nominate Mike Sharon. I'll second that. Um, so, Mike by Carrie and seconded by Gabe. Wonderful. Are there any other nominations for the position of Board Chair? One last chance for any other nominations. All right, we're going to close the nominations for the position of board chair. Um, so what we're going to do now is a roll call vote. Uh, your vote is for the person you would like to uh, put into the position of the Board of Education chair. Um, so when I call your name, your vote is either going to be for Heather Summer for board chair or for Mike uh, Sharon as board chair. All right, so I'm just going to go through and do a roll call vote. Uh, Carrie Frilino. Mike Sharon. Uh, Mike Sharon. Heather Summer. Joe Coletti. Heather Summer. Kirsten. Heather Summer. Gabe. Uh, Mike Sharon. Heather. Heather Summer. Pam. Mike Sharon. Uh, Mike. Mike Sharon. Amy. Heather Summer. Drew. Heather Summer. And Scott. Heather Summer. I'm going to do some quick mathematics, <laughs> which is not my strong point. I'll have my business manager tallying this with me. So I have. Uh, four votes for Mike Sharon, which would leave me with seven votes for Heather Summer. Is that what you have? Amazing. I never <laughs> taught that, so it's actually good that I did that. Uh, I would like to congratulate uh, Heather as the new chair of the board of Region 8 and ask her to come sit next to me so we can get to the, because I get to hand off the gap. <laughs> That's easier for next to each other. 
Yes, we are. Watch those mics. Oh, you're like seriously handing it off right this second. Yes, ma'am. Okay, got it. So basically, I'm just going to do um, open up the floor for anything else. Okay. Got it. Okay, so um, we'll open up the floor for nominations for vice chair. Okay, I would like to nominate Joey Coletti for vice chair. I'll second that. Gabe Marks. Okay, um, any other nominations for vice chair? Okay, let me do a. Just close the nominations. Okay, <laughs> close the nominations. <laughs> Um, Just do a roll call. Vote. Roll call vote. Okay, so Carrie Ferlino? Yes. Joey Coletti? Yes. Gabe Marks? Yes, to Joe Coletti. Pam Farrington? Yes. Amy Romanchuk? Yes. Scott Soyette? Yes. Mike Sharon? Yes, Joey Coletti. Kristen Erlinson? Yes. Heather Summer? Yes. Mike Bollier? Yes. Andrew Gotham? Yes. So that was unanimous. Okay. All right. Um, we will open the floor for nominations for the position of secretary. I'd like to nominate Mike Sharon. <laughs> I'll second it. Okay. Any other nominations? Okay, nominations are closed. Roll call vote. Carrie Ferlino? Yes. Joe Coletti? Yes. Gabe Marks? Yes, to Mike Sharon. Pam Farrington? Yes. Amy Romanchuk? Yes. Scott Soyette? Yes. Michael Sharon? Yes. Kristen Erlinson? Yes. Heather Summer, yes. Michael Bollier, yes. Drew Golfin, yes. Okay. And one more time. Uh, open the floor for nominations for the position of treasurer. Any nominations? It's can I just remind the board that it's okay to self nominate as well? Yes. I'll also remind the board that this is not a position that carries a lot of um, responsibility. Seems like it must not be a very big budget. Is there is there any investment to related payment decisions? No. Everybody's looking at you. I work for, I'm a registered rep in compliance for a large financial services firm. This type of stuff, I have to go through a lot of red tape to get it. So I've been treasurer before. So uh, maybe next time I have to get, figure out if this I'll, is a big deal, but I'll respectfully just. I'll go ahead and nominate myself for treasurer. Thanks, Kate. Uh, I'll second. second. Scott, second. Scott got the second. Any other nominations? Okay. Nominations. Do a roll call vote. Carrie Ferlino. For Gabe. For Gabe. Yes. <clears throat> Joe Coletti. Yes, for Gabe. Gabe Marks. Uh, yes. Pam Farrington. Yes. Amy Romanchuk. Yes. Scott Soyette. Yes. Mike Sharon? Yes. Kristen Erlinson? Yes. Heather Summer? Yes. Mike Bollier? Yes. And Drew Goffin? Yes. Okay. <coughs> okay. Um, so, public comments. Hebron Andover and Marble community engagement and attendance at BOE public meetings is welcomed. The public comment section segment of the meeting agenda is set aside so the BOE may receive public comments. 
Procedurally, public remarks will be limited to three minutes and citizens will be asked to identify themselves. Because the BOE is limited by the Freedom of Information Act to discussing only matters on the agenda, the BOE is not permitted <coughs> to engage in a discussion of the comments presented. Oh, Gabe, will you be the timekeeper? Sure. Thank you. Okay. Is there anybody that's interested in making public comment? Anybody online? Hands up. What's up? Dawn. She's our board clerk. I actually have a clarification question on something else. I can wait till after this is over if you'd like. Yeah, let's wait till it's over, Dawn. We can go back. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So no, no, so, public, no comment. public comment. So then we'll move on. on to the um, student representative reports. Ava, do you want to go first? Sure. So first of all, I would like to say um, Happy New Year to everyone. It's great to be back from winter break. Um, so I, there are some things that happened before uh, break that um, I was going to say to the meeting. Um, recently, we had club photos taken and um, seniors were received a free photo of everyone, which was really great um, for this year. Um, also, we have um, continued the DEI meetings sporadically. Um, we're still like um, deliberating to see how we could possibly increase participation in those meetings. Um, as well, um, we have had a swap shop occur at our school. So basically, it was run by uh, Sydney Bula, and um, basically people brought in clothes and like you could like swap out other clothes for that. It, there was like a ticket system. It was so cool. Um, a lot of people got involved in that and it might continue sometime later in the school year, maybe for progresses. Um, so that was very interactive within the RAM community. Um, and actually today we had a little, um, for the seniors, we had this little, like I would say, panel of kids who had graduated RAM and they spoke about their experience after graduating RAM, basically how that transition was. Um, it was very um, educational, very helpful, I feel like. And um, yeah, that's my report, so thank you. I have a quick question, Ava, the yeah, sure. swap shop. Was that yeah. sponsored by a class or was it just volunteerism? It was volunteer, so Basically, there was really no need for money because it was all people would bring in clothes and then people would take clothes from clothes that people brought in and anything that wasn't like taken from the swap shop would be donated. Um, I actually did help like run it a couple times. Um, and basically when you brought in clothes, that clothing item, say it was a pair of jeans, that would be worth like three tickets and three tickets you could get like a different pair of jeans that would be hung in that swap shop. So I will, I just, uh, um, the, the, it was a completely student run operation, which was great. Um, it was born from either one of the business classes. I don't know if it was entrepreneurship or one of the business classes, but it was a student idea. Student presented it to the high school principal. This is what I'm hoping to accomplish. This is what I need to do. We set some parameters around it and it was set up during the context, as Eva said, uh, um, during the lunch waves and it was a, a great success, I think. So it was a really, really cool thing. I just, it's a great example of a student having an idea yeah. and running with it and making it happen. So it was, uh, it was yeah. thanks for sharing that one. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's great. Everybody always wants what's in somebody else's closet. <laughs> I mean, I definitely got stuff from there. It was like, I, I definitely got a lot of stuff. It was crazy, um, a really great, Thing that went on. Please do it during prom season. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Happen. Oliver, you know, a couple of meetings. I get to play the new guy and ask questions that maybe everyone else already knows. But what are the DEI meetings? So that is like diversity and equity meetings. Oh, okay. And okay. basically, students and faculty meet together and just discuss any like issues or things that are going well, things that are not going so well about the social atmosphere at RAM. Um, also. Um, spotlighting like how diversity is dealt with and all of that. Um, it's really just like a safe place for people to share their opinions and all of that. Okay. Thank you. Oliver? Thank you. Um, something with speaking of transitioning, um, juniors are, we just had a meeting today during our advisory about um, 
the student like dues that we participate in the school and a lot of juniors are getting excited for prom and you know it seems quite like in the distance everybody is like there's a lot of tension going on and people are you know like asking whoever they want going as friends i know i'm going with my one of my friends um it's just a lot of excitement that's going on around it um and dues are a part of that and i think a lot of students are just excited to be able to go to like their first or at least for me i know i'm going to <coughs> my first like real big um uh, school event that's like you know every like if you think of high school people think of prom you know it's just it's just a big experience for a, a lot of students um but something that we all have to face before we get there is uh midterms which are coming up soon um and a lot of students are st stressing i know i'm feeling a little bit of tension on that um and but you know sometimes starts uh, january 17th and you know, you know a lot of students are starting to prepare for it um there's you know a few days of class and everything it's slowly building up and i would just hopefully get finished the next semester pretty strong how long do midterms last is it a week uh, four yeah days. four days, four days. Four days. You know, she jumped in quick. Mm. No, no, it's not a whole week. <laughs> <laughs> well, because the, the reason I know this is because of the fact that when you have, like we had our unexpected, uh, not a snow day, a weather day, oh, and yes. there was conversation. We don't move um, midterm exams when there's only one day that's that's impacting us. So that's why I know if it, if it was, if we had another weather day, which thankfully the snowstorm looks like it's coming on Saturday, um, it might impact us. But, Okay. Um, yeah, so the next item on the agenda is the chair report. So um, let's pass on that. <laughs> um, and then you're up for the superintendent. Report. Sure. So there's just a, a few things that I wanted to mention. I thought, thought it was important to highlight. Um, I had a chance to go into the panel discussion today with the graduates of uh, with the RAM graduates. And it was really great because one of our, um, one of the panel members is somebody who's had some life experience and now he's back working for this. It's uh, Luke from the, um, uh, who actually works as a library media specialist assistant para here. He's, uh, yeah, he, he graduated probably five or six years ago, but he was a member of the panel. It was great to see, you know, a diverse, uh, a broad range of experiences and backgrounds and, uh, and, and again, just had some really good uh, pieces of knowledge. Rowan, our former board uh, board of ed student representative from last year was there as well. So it was really good to see some familiar faces. Um, just some things that I wanted to touch base on. Uh, Quinnipiac University hosted the Special Olympics basketball games um, in, in late November. Um, and Team Ram, which is the state sponsored team for our area, entered three teams, each in a different division. And two of the three teams finished second in their divisions. These two teams included students, athletes, student athletes from the high schools, uh, Regan, <coughs> Regan Sawyer and, and um, Olivia Tagliga, and um, two team partners, Heather Connors, who's a teacher here at the middle school, and Riley Sawyer, a student at the high school. Um, and I just, I, I think it's important that we highlight the successes of our student athletes in, in, in all sorts of competitions. So it was great to see them have that success. Uh, also in late November, Kathy Green and her students from the Medical Careers Program um, sponsored a blood drive at the high school. Um, I, I say this, uh, I, I am a big blood donor. I've donated, I donate at every opportunity I can. And Kathy was not happy with me because I didn't donate um, because I was scheduled to donate somebody else, someplace else the following week. And then what happened was, is I waited about two hours to donate blood when I did it on my own. And Kathy told me, you wouldn't have had that experience if you donated it to Ram. So um, I will make sure that I let board members know the next time that we do have an opportunity for blood donations. It's a great thing that Kathy and her students do. And um, it'd be great to have you come in and do that as well. Um, the Ram Drama Club performed the play Puffs uh, in the, back in the beginning of December, which was a great uh, show. I had a chance to go to the um, opening night on Friday. Um, I don't know if any board members had a chance to attend it as well. Um, Puffs is, it's a parody of, uh, in a different perspective of the Harry Potter series. I had to look that up on Wikipedia because I didn't know what it was before. Uh, I'm sorry, on, uh, on, on the internet before, because I didn't know what it was, but it was it was really funny. It's a, a very kind of like quirky sense of humor, offbeat sense of humor. It was a great show for the kids to put, to, put together. Um, <clears throat> on the subject of performing arts, we had a number of high school band and choir students who have been uh, selected for the Eastern Region Honors Ensembles. Uh, for choir, we had uh, Alana Calhoun, uh, Maeve Dodantio, uh, Evelyn Gutierrez, Caitlin Hoven, Janina Howard, Mason um, Kapanik, 
Emerson Melquist, uh, Jaslyn Pendleton, Lindsay Raymond, and Shannon Regan. Uh, for band, we had Olivia Akari, Giovanni Assunto, Finn Blake, uh, Jonah uh, Izano, um, Maddie Graves, Natalie Groves, Reagan Haynes, Trevor Hooker, Isabel Kramer, Alexa Odie, Alex Peeling, and Jake Sawyer. So, you know, just again, a testament to all the great things that we got going on in athletics and fine and performing arts. Um, and that concludes my report of the superintendent. Okay. So the next um, item on the agenda is the approval of minutes, which are in your board packets. Okay, so I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes for the regular November 20th Board of Ed meeting. So moved. Eight marks. A second? I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay. That went quickly enough that I, I didn't get a chance to ask if we point out typos here or we don't bother with them. Uh, no, you, 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 we could have done, we definitely could have done that. Um, okay. not, not a big deal. Just, yeah, I would just say next time you can just say there's a couple of minor typo changes that we can make yeah. and then we can certainly add those into the corrected minutes. That's not a problem. Okay. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the student um, program spotlight, and tonight we've got Ram Volleyball. And so we'll just give him a chance to come on in. For some reason, they didn't really want to sit in the audience during the business portion of our program. <laughs> So I'll just, before I turn it over to Mr. Trudeau, our athletic director, I'll just simply say, um, and, and Coach Guernsey's heard me say this before. So my one of my first introductions to Ram was as a volleyball parent for a different school. And that was not a fun um, experience. I can tell you that. My daughter was a, a, a volleyball player in Thailand. You guys just basically kicked their butts. And it was tough to watch that as a parent. Now, as a superintendent for Ram, it's pretty awesome. Um, and so it's a really uh, big event when you have a team win a state championship. It's a pretty big event when you have a team win two state championships in a row. But a three-peat to me warrants getting recognized by the board. And I appreciate the coaches and the team for being here. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Trudeau. Thank you. Um, thank you. Um, Really, I'm here to speak on behalf of, of this team, the coaching staff, um, and even the parents a little bit to, to just say, um, thank you for giving them this recognition and this chance to, to come out in front of you. Um, more from a perspective of speaking to them and speaking about them, um, just to know a little bit more and, and expand upon what uh, Dr. McNamara said. Um, yep, they're, that this is a group that's won three state championships in a row. Um, this program has only been around for about 20 years and they've won 10 state championships. Um, I know that their first year as a program, which was, I think I was a freshman in college, um, they didn't even have a gym to play in. They, they traveled for all their games. Um, so to come this far that quickly is, is unheard of. Um, and, and that is a testament to their leader, uh, Coach Guernsey, who I will say, you know, we don't even have to say volleyball. He's one of the best high school coaches in the country. Um, and, and, and I truly mean that when I say that. I would have him coach any sport at this school. Um, I would have him coach any sport um, at any school in the state uh, and, and put him up against that, that because of his leadership. Um, and because of that leadership, it, it brings such a unique um, – a unique experience in the program and what these girls who go through the program get. Uh, a lot of times in athletics, we talk about the life skills that you're going to get from, from playing on a high school team and how that translates. Um, to be honest, it's not always 100% that you're getting that. You could, you could play for a coach that has poor moral values or poor, um, you know, just poor structure in the way they do it. This program is, is the exemplar for again, any high school team in the country, any high school athletic program in the country of how to run a program where you're gonna get something out of it, you're gonna get a life experience 
that that you can rely on when you're 30 years old, 40 years old, 50 years old. Um, these girls get off probably 30 times during the season, at least 30 times during the season for 6 a.m. practices. Um, and a lot of those times, they're still practicing again after school. Um, I, I can speak for myself. I wish I had kind of had more of that discipline to wake up that early in the morning when I was in high school um, and, and create that habit for myself. Um, I've said this before, a team that wins 10 state championships or three state championships in a row, you're usually looking at actually a team that wins a single state championship in a season. It could be their first ever. You're usually looking at a group of superior athletes. Um, these are great student athletes, but I'm going to say they're, they're usually not the most athletic group, but they're cohesive. They're a sisterhood of girls that outworks everyone. Is anyone taking that as an insult? Because I don't want to. <laughs> I saw a few it's not, I did, I did it's, 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 it's about how hard you guys work and, 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 and what you guys have earned through that. And, and the truth is, a lot of times we're playing against teams that are taller. We don't have a girl that's six feet on this team. Lots of the teams they play against have girls that these girls probably look at and they think they're high size. Um, and... and their ability to come together and beat that adversity on a consistent basis is a testament to their hard work, their dedication, their parents' hard work, their parents' dedication to this program and what they put into it by driving them when they're freshmen and sophomores at 6 a.m. in the morning. Um, and, and just that that togetherness that they have, what they do for our school community um, is, 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 is well-deserved. Uh, you know, more than just a board of ed recognition, um, but we are certainly very, very proud of these girls and, and thankful to be here to, to get this recognition. So I think I've talked enough and extended your agenda. So um, just one more congratulations for these girls. Yeah. And if anyone has anything to say, any questions, I think we can do that. I, congratulations, you guys. I played in volleyball when I was in high school, which was a really long time ago. And we, it was nothing like what you guys do. There was there was no getting up at 6 a.m. or any of that. So congratulations. Curious by a show of hands, how many of you think you're going to play volleyball in college or would like to? <laughs> Great. It'll probably be less taxing than Guernsey's practice. <laughs> So just to throw that out there. Does anybody have other questions? I'd like to. No questions. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Yeah. 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 And I appreciate you had to share this with you. Well, hold on. Oh, hang on, hang on. Hold on. Hold on. Wait, Mike, were you going to say something? Me? No, oh, I was going to say exactly what Kirsten said. So. Thank um, you for doing so. You guys did So awesome we like job. to take a picture with the student groups that come with the board. Um, we're trying to get better community equipment like this. We give to the boosters, um, maybe send it into the River East. So if you don't mind, we'd love to have a picture with you. And we can just do it in front of you. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> 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 One, two, three. All right, you're good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <coughs> 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 
horse in the Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the next thing on our agenda is the consent agenda. Agenda in your package is the resignation letter um, from Jessica Blodgett. I, um, do you have a, rec a recommendation to approve the consent agenda? So moved. Is that Scott? Scott. Uh, a second? I'll second. So I'll just say, uh, you know, I'm very excited for Jessica. Uh, she was a, a, an absolute asset to the school district, but um, she had an opportunity to uh, increase her quality of life by going to a school district that is a walkable distance from her house. And, uh, and she's it's the school where she grew up and went to school. So I'm happy for her, sad for us. But we're fortunate we got a, uh, somebody to step into the position and um, we wish Jessica the best. All right. Um Oh, just, a, just, a, yeah. yeah. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Epstein? Yes, okay. okay. Um, item 12 is old business. <coughs> and, oh, right. Okay. This is the discussion of the Ram High School of Choice. Yes. Yeah, so, um, Veteran board members have had some conversation about this in the past, um, uh, but I'll just give a quick context for our, our new board members who are, who are joining us this evening for the first time. So um, since I started here at RAM for the start of the 22-23 school year, um, we've had a, a few conversations at the board level in both the finance subcommittee and, and at the whole board about whether or not uh, we would be interested in serving as a school of choice for um, local area, either other K to six districts or potentially a K to eight district. Um, last year, I had a conversation with a local area superintendent of a small school district. Um, it, it didn't really gain much traction um, and, and the conversations just fell flat. Um, this year, um, we, we find ourselves in a similar situation, but a little bit of a different scenario. And, and what I mean by that is um, we were approached by Columbia Public Schools who attended a finance subcommittee probably back in November, October, I'd say, I think it was back in October, and did a, a comprehensive presentation and expressed a lot of interest in sending, school, uh, sending their students uh, or making RAM a choice school. Right now, uh, Kids, when they graduate from uh, Forest Porter School, have the opportunity to attend to choose between either Bolton High School or E.O. Smith High School. And essentially what the administration from uh, Columbia Public School said to us was they they believe that there is a high degree of interest um, from students in students and families in Columbia um, for, for a whole host of reasons. Um, that would they want to choose RAM as their school of choice if that was an option for them. And the way that the conversations have really been up to this point have, have I, I think I'm capturing it accurately, have really been about the financial aspect of things. Um, it, this is, it is an opportunity for uh, this district to uh, see some revenue. Um, and it, that is something that this board may be interested in. Um, and, and, and what we had talked about it back in October um, ultimately, where we landed coming out of the finance subcommittee was there's going to be a new board that gets seated soon with some new members. And let's see what the appetite is of the, the dynamics of the new board. Um, and, and I'm going to ask Heather to jump in if she thinks I'm mischaracterizing this in any way. But um, I think that we need to look at it more than just a financial decision, even though finances is certainly part of it because it's, it's a possibility for revenue. Um, I don't think we should look at it from a pure dollars and cents standpoint and say we either want the money or don't want the money. Um, for context, um, 
the the tuition that would be uh, we could determine what our tuition would be with with and for Columbia students. That would be something that we would negotiate with the district. Um, they have different tiers of money that they spend. They, they pay a certain dollar amount for students who choose to go to Bolton. They pay a different dollar amount for students that choose to go to EO Smith. Um, we could feasibly negotiate a different rate for students to come to RAM if, if that's what the, the, the appetite of this board is. Um, but what I, what I feel we need to talk about is as, as a board, do we want to open up our, our doors to students from other towns or at least one other town? We, there's, there's, there's a contract that we would enter into. There's, there's agreements that would be put into place that say, here's what the standard tuition is for a student coming from another town um, with, with essentially no extras. Um, but if that student required special education services, or if that student had a 504 plan and required um, occupational therapy or physical therapy, there's additional costs that would get tacked on that that other that the sending district would pay. So you all of that stuff would be put out in writing and very, very well defined um, prior to us actually taking students from another school. So, for, I say this because I think it's important to know if we set a dollar amount for this is what the tuition rate is, that's not necessarily what the tuition rate is going to be for a student who is requiring, who may require a high degree of services beyond um, a, a traditional classroom setting. Um, because there are costs associated with that when you talk about specialized education and specialized services. Um, so what I would like to be able to do is, and I'm not saying it's necessarily going to come out of this meeting tonight. I think it's a lengthy conversation. Um, and, and, and it's certainly nothing that I'm suggesting that we would even think about for next school year. But I think that we should, if it's something that from a philosophical standpoint, if members of this board are interested in opening RAM up as a school of choice for students from Columbia, um, on a philosophical level, then we'd have to look to see, does it make sense from a practical standpoint and from a financial standpoint? Um, I've spoken way too much. I don't know, Heather, if you have anything, because I know you've been involved in the conversations with the finance subcommittee. Yeah, I, I mean, I think you represented it very well. I think tonight's decision is, do we really want to um, look at this seriously? And then from there, we probably need to get a subcommittee that's going to look at all the different issues, you know, financial, um, administrative, you know, obligations of the principal of middle school, principal of the high school, like what are all those things, but it's, it will take time. So I think tonight is just, do we have the appetite to even consider it? And then, can you I, know, can we figure out who would be on the subcommittee? What can I add, if that's okay? Yeah. To, to your thoughts. Um, I think that with new members of the board coming in and some members that haven't participated in the budgetary process. I think that having gone, I think what we should do tonight, my suggestion is to not necessarily to table this topic for post budgetary conf consideration. And the reason that I say that is I think that those of you that haven't participated in the budget process are going to learn quite a bit more about what the future holds for, for district for region eight relative to enrollment, uh, and some of the challenges that that's going to present us. I think that that's going to give us some additional context relative to why we might want to consider sure. uh, being a school of choice. So I don't, I don't, I think that the decision tonight is perhaps do we consider continuing to talk about it in the future and then maybe look to, to put that to figure out what, yeah. um, subcommittee together maybe after the budgetary process has been completed. Yeah, and the budgetary process is starting now, right? Until correct. Well, the budget goes to the three towns for referendum in April. In April. May. May. Sorry, my apologies. May. Uh, yeah. First. But our our frequency of meetings begins to pick up in February yes. relative to understanding <laughs> what proposals are on the table, what the budget's going to look like, uh, what our enrollment looks like. Right, there is a, a fair number of. Perhaps some of you, when you signed up for the board, thought there was going to be once a month. During budget season, it is a little bit more frequent, <laughs> just, just to let you know. 
but yeah, February through March, and then we get ready for our April reviews that are open to the public, Correct. and then of course the referendum. And actually, the budget process may help us identify other questions that we have in that's, consideration of having students or not exactly. having students. That's that's what I'm thinking. Okay. Before we table this, um, two questions. One is transport is covered by the ascending town, right? Correct. So we wouldn't have, that wouldn't be a concern. Correct. And is there any sense of Columbia's notion of how many other numbers? What how many students? It's a, it's a great it's a great question. So. Um, I wouldn't say that this is anywhere near a hard and fast oh, number. It can't be. But uh, through the conversation that we had with the administration from Columbia, they, they anticipated approximately 10. They, they usually graduate about 40 students from eighth grade. Um, the majority of those students do go to EO Smith. But because of informal conversations that the administration has had with family members in the school district, many parents approach them and say, uh, Rams essentially in my backyard. Why am I having my kid get on a bus and drive 45 minutes to EO Smith? Um, you know, I, I, I don't want to say anything disparagingly against any other schools or districts, but I think people see Ram as a, a beautiful school building and, and lots of opportunities for athletics and for, for, for fine arts. So, so the, the short answer is what the number that they gave to us is they would figure 10 initially. Um, and they said that, you know, obviously, as you build up over the years, that would, they would anticipate that number growing. Thank you. But great question. So. Oh, what would the uh, yeah, suggested but, path forward be? Is that... Yeah, I guess we just want to understand yeah, how I, people feel. I, I just think. Um, it's not really a vote, though. No, no, no. We're, we're not looking for any action this evening. In any way, this is, as I said, when this was this came up in the fall at a really interesting time because we had we knew we had several board members that were going to be leaving. Mm -hmm. We knew that we had we're going to have several new board members coming on. And the idea was, let's not do anything until we get our new board members involved. And so this is on the agenda. This is purely a discussion. This is just I, I felt it was prudent to bring the issue forward. Yeah say this is kind of what we've been talking about um, and and it's conversations that we've been having and it's been ongoing conversations. Um, I, I feel like we're in a really good place because I feel like there are many other school districts that <clears throat> literally um, go after students from K to six or K to eight districts that, that, like where superintendents and boards like will reach out and say, we would love to have you come to us because they look at it from that revenue standpoint, right? So we're in a good place in the sense of, I think that your your idea is a, is a good one, Mike, is just, you know, we can get through the budget season. I just wanted to make sure that this was on people's plate and they were aware of the fact that these conversations were taking place and we can take whatever direction the administration and I can take whatever direction the board gives to us coming out, uh, coming out of this conversation. We have a question from online. Is it a board member? It, it's Pam. Pam, you want to go ahead and ask your question? Yeah, I just, um, and Colin, you may not really know the answer to this, um, but I, as a parent, uh, I always wondered why we uh, children from uh, Columbia did not come um, to us and why they did, you know, I, I know, uh, I know quite a few who, who traveled to EO Smith and seems, uh, kind of like a hike. Um, do you know, do you have any, any idea as to why we did not take students in the past? Where I, did, do you, again, you may not know the answer to this. Um, uh, it was just, oh, I, I actually always wondered why they had choices to go to different places, but not to us. Uh, I don't have an answer to that question, Amy. What I can say to you, though, is I know that this is not the first time, and, and Dr. Shrusi is nodding, acknowledging this, because I know he's got a lot more historical knowledge. This is not the first time that this has been brought up. I think the difference between in previous years and what we're seeing now, for, for context, I think maybe existing or veteran board members know this, but maybe our new board members don't, is... Um, uh, um, Scott, who was our, who was the acting superintendent here for the last two years before I came on board, has been working in Columbia Public Schools for the past year and a half as an interim assistant superintendent. And I, 
I have a sneaking suspicion um, that he might be talking up how good of a district Ram is. And, and I think that people know that he is a conduit to, to us as an administrative group, as a board. Um, and so Scott Leslie, he was the one that reached out to me because as I said, the conversation took place with a different district last year. It just never really got any traction. Um, I think that there is a real yearning on, on the part of, and, and um, you know, Amy was just talking about this, um, on, on a decent number of people from Columbia. And I think that they're probably more apt to speak up to Scott Leslie. And now he's coming to us and letting us know about this. And, you know, he was the one that reached out to me and said, could we do a presentation to your board of, to, to the board subcommittee? They, I, if, if it ever travels down the road, they would come here and do a presentation for the entire board. Um, but I, I think that your, your idea is a good one. Yeah, I would, I would make a, a motion to add it to an agenda, to the agenda immediately following our budgetary sure. uh, review. That way we document it, it's in the minutes, and we can go ahead and add it at that time. Yeah, you know, I think that's good. The May meeting. Yeah, I think that's the Depending on one. So, so <laughs> I have a question because I, I did attend the meetings in the fall as a member of the public, and one of the issues that came up was financial. Yep. So I think your point about the budget is spot on. The mm -hmm. question I had was, so essentially what Columbia would offer or any other school would offer is sort of a marginal per student rate. And I'm wondering whether our budgetary process has a calculation like that in it, a sort of a fixed cost calculation and a marginal per student calculation because one of the issues was communicating whatever decision it's made to our publics. And of course, Marlboro, Andrew, and Hebron pay much more per student because they got to pay for the building, right? So do we, as part of our budgetary process, have we looked at fixed versus per student costs and things like that? And is this the time to start thinking about something like that if we're gonna open that door? So, um... The way the the information that I have, I will say typically, but I've done it once, so I can't say typically. But what I what what I provide to the board is what the state has identified as what uh, the district's per pupil expenditure is. Right, the amount, the average amount that that for the cost of education for a RAM student. The reason that this came up last, I, I think it was in the November meeting, um, was because. The finance subcommittee was trying to get a more accurate representation of what that dollar amount might be. Mm -hmm. So, and because because the per pupil expenditure that's provided to us by the state doesn't take into consideration several factors, right? Um, the number is somewhere in the neighborhood of twenty five. It's 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 in the it's in the low twenties. Mm -hmm. um, I will tell you that um, there's not a school district. Uh, uh, there's not a neighboring school district that is going to pay $21,000 to have one of their kids go here. But that is factoring in things and something that you mentioned, that's factoring in transportation costs. That's factoring in special education costs. That's factoring in a lot of, a lot of um, different things that you can pull out of that dollar amount that's identified by the state and get down to what is a real cost per pupil when you take out transportation and you take out. And so we, we went through that, exercise a little bit um, prior to our November meeting. Um, I don't know if we landed in a place of total agreement with what that number is, because mm -hmm. um, there, I don't want to sound all over the place, but but it's not a simple answer. It's, it's really, really hard to pin it down because um, towns we we don't get uh, certain funding from the state because we're regional but those towns but they're the towns get certain fundings from the state and 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 that money offsets what their local cost is for education well we don't we don't get that but that but the, but <laughs> towns like marlboro towns like hebron towns like it they get those dollar amounts given to them so it's 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 a complicated thing to do what you're trying to do mm -hmm. i'm not saying it's impossible I just don't know if we would ever say, oh, yeah, this is the number. We, we could talk and say, this is pretty close to what the number is, but I don't know if we could ever say this is specific. We don't need the perfect to be the enemy of the good. Either, Correct. Right? So, I mean, Correct. Yeah. Uh, Colin, quick question. Uh, would you think, because the final budget approval is in early April, right, from the board, um, do 
you think an April meeting for that topic would be appropriate or should it be the May meeting? I would defer to the board. Okay. <clears throat> Um, so Joey made a good point, and he said that assuming the budget passes that referendum, right, because if it does not, then we go back yeah. to the administration, right. and our support goes back to the drawing board, and we've got some additional work to do. Uh, I think that this discussion, in my opinion, is one that can be had after that that process is 100% is complete. Sorry. No, no, that's quite right. Um, and so I, I don't want to cloud the issue of, of yeah, defining no. our budget fully. And I don't think that we're on a timeline either. As, as Colin mentioned, we're not, we're not targeting next year to, to yeah. make this happen. But I think uh, waiting until after the budgetary process is, is complete uh, gives us an opportunity, even before the summer break, uh, to, to try to make some decisions, I think, uh, right. about how we want to go forward. So Thank schedule you. it for the first meeting after the budget is passed? I, I think that's fair to do so, yeah. I, 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 one of the things that we could do, yeah, I, I, and, and so we don't even have to identify, I know that you talked about making a motion, sure. we don't even have to go to that level of formality. If you, what you're saying to me is, hey, Colin, make sure that this gets put on the agenda for the first meeting after the budget's passed, that's as easy as, that's simple as that. And then that way, there's a degree of flexibility depending on how. I like that. Just a, <laughs> um, is it customary that the school that wants to come to the district sets the price? Because it seems to me like we would set the price to say, if you want to bring your students here, <coughs> this is what it costs. And to me, it shouldn't matter whether you're from Columbia or whether you're from Franklin or it's the same price. For, is that, what's the, do you know the standard for other schools? I, I, I wouldn't feel equipped to answer that question because okay. I've not gone through this process before, but what I, I would say it would make the most sense that if we have a district that's coming to us and say, we're interested in having our kids go to school at your at your high school, then we should drive that conversation. You know, and and I think, you know, if if the amount that they're giving EO Smith is fourteen thousand five hundred dollars and we go in and we say we want seventeen thousand dollars, that I don't know what they you know, if we go in and said, hey, we want a thousand dollars more, you know, I think that that's that's the negotiation process. Um, so I think that we would be we would have the ability to negotiate a rate that might be different from what they pay EO Smith. We just I just don't know what would be a realistic number to land on, but that would be figured out through the conversations that we would have if we get through the philosophical conversations and decide ultimately this is what we're interested in doing. And they also have a relationship with Lyman. They did. 30 years ago when I subbed there. Yeah, they go to Wyndham Tech, Lyman, because uh, Lyman has an agricultural program, right. and then Bolton and Neil Smith. Those are the four. All four. Yeah. So. Any other comments on that? Okay. I think there might have been an online question. I don't know. If oh, I'm sorry, Pam. Thank you. Pam, did you have another question? I did just uh, very quickly. Um, someone mentioned the timeline. Colin, do you have an idea of what the time, how long it does take? Obviously, like you said, we weren't would ne not necessarily be thinking about this for the next school year. But how long does it take to get something like this going if we were interested? I think that if we were in a situation where we where we really started to the, opened up the conversations after the budget passes this year. And if we landed at a place, if the board lands at a place where they say, yes, we are interested, then having it, having a, an agreement and a contract to put into place for the following school year is, is very, very doable. The, the, um, you know, the, the standard, the, the contracts between districts are fairly standard, right? The language of the contracts is fairly standard. It's just once you come up with what the numbers are. So it, 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 again, if we, if we started the process late in the spring, spent you know late spring and, and in the fall talking about it and then making a determination as for, for it to go into effect for the following school year would be very feasible i have a question do we know when the eighth graders in columbia have to choose a school by that's a great question i don't have that definitive <laughs> time period i could tell you though it's they start to point in a certain direction right around now um because okay. as i as i said um when i had a conversation the last conversation i had with scott leslie because as i said he had come and presented to us um as a finance subcommittee and he reached out to me several weeks ago and he just said what do you you know what do you think 
where do you think things are? And I told him we were waiting for the new board members to get seated. We were going to be bringing up at our December, now January um, meeting. Um, and I just said, you can take us off the table for next year for sure. And he said, that's great. That's it's helpful for him to have that information. So I, I think they start to figure things out because, as I said, there are budgetary impacts for Columbia because there is a different dollar amount depending on whether you go to EO Smith or whether you go to uh, Bolton. And then the last question that I had was our middle school is seventh and eighth grade. Their school is K through eight. So are they looking to have their sixth graders come here from middle school or is it just right from their eighth grade to our high school? All the conversations we've had has only been about high school students. They're okay. not looking to dismantle their middle school. Okay. Yeah. yeah. They still would be a, a K to eight district. And, uh, Following on to that, like if they start, <laughs> could they come potentially in the 10th grade? Like decide. Those are all things that we, we would, would, we would okay. decide. Um, those are all things that we would decide. Okay. I'll just leave that. Anybody else? online eric we're good okay so that brings us to the second read of policies um go ahead yeah so i'll just i'll just start off so um for uh for the second reading of policies, so um for we had a first reading of policies at our last meeting after our first reading of policies if there's feedback that is provided um, it's given to us generally during that period. Um, if we are able to then make adjustments to anything based off of that feedback, we do that and we make, and then we put them up, we post them to the agenda. And so um, I, I did not get any feedback prior to the agenda being posted. That's an important thing to know, feedback prior to the agenda being posted. Um, I, I say that for someone. Um, and and so, uh, so we posted the agenda as they had been in the first read. Um, so there's three policies that we're looking at making changes to. I'll just speak at a very high level, and then I can, and then I think the best thing for us to do would be to go through and do motions for each one and see if there's discussion with any of them. Um, so the three policies we're looking at for second readings tonight need to be updated to ensure that they align with current legislation. Um, for our newer board members, uh, we did we went through the process of a policy audit last year, um, which provided us with a lot of insight as far as prioritizing certain policies to be updated. Um, and, and we work with our legal counsel, Shipman and Goodwin, and we use their model policies. So when we update model po our policies, we are, we are comparing them to their model policies, which are put together by a team of attorneys um, who are very savvy with the legislative changes that, that need to be made. Um, so our three policies for our second read tonight are um, uh, co cover the following topics, alcohol, tobacco, and drug-free workspace, employment and student teacher checks and possession and use of deadly firearm uh, weapons or firearms. And, and I think the best thing for us to do is do a motion for approval for each a motion, see if there's a motion to approve each one. And then after we get a motion in a second, open it up for discussion and see if there's any feedback from board members. Okay. Okay, so do we have a motion to adopt the revised policy 4118.2, 4218.2? I'm sorry, 4218.2 alcohol, tobacco, and drug-free workspace as workplace as presented. So moved. Scott? We have oh, a second. second. It does carry, carry. Carry? Okay, any discussion? Scott, I'm waiting for you to give us a title. <laughs> <laughs> Not this one. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? All right. A motion to adopt the revised policy 4157 and 4257 employment and student teacher checks as presented. We have a motion to. So moved. Is that Carrie? Yeah. That's me. Yes. We have a second. I'll second. Okay, discussion? Yeah, I had some questions on this one. Um, nothing about the content, only about the structure of it. Um, they, um, you, you can see of it. 
lots of handwritten notes all over this. Um, and we went back to Shipman and Goodwin with my, my, my questions and they said, you know, maybe you want to do this instead. So I'm going to move that we table this one. Um, I, I will submit a, another version for the, to the policy committee to look at. Um, but I, a couple places the language just seemed wrong. They put things together that didn't belong together. They, they basically take, for some one, ones like this, they take the law, they take the statute and just convert it from, you know, boards shall do this to the district will do, it does this and, and, and so on. They, they, and in some places they combine some things that weren't, I think legally weren't expected to be combined. Um, so I would move to table this one um, and I, we can submit a, my, my suggestions to the policy committee. Um, and that's it's not a huge, huge change. One, one wording change that accepted from shipment and goodman, and one that I continue to say that we should do, and it's basically just take this thing from, you know, section 1.B.2. A uh, sub three, and, and and instead of being part of one, two, or three, it goes up to a higher level. That's that's really it. But it's structurally enough different that that I don't think we could just do it as a you know a minor amendment here. Okay. So um, then we would. So I, I move to set to table this this one for another meeting. Okay. I think we have to vote on it. We have to table. So there's a motion on the table. So you can either make a vote to. There could be a motion to amend. There could. Somebody could make a motion to amend the motion that has been put on, or we could vote, it gets voted down, and then a separate vote after that would be to table it. Okay, I, I haven't read through my Roberts entirely yet, but I thought you could move to table a motion that's on the, the floor. Um, I'm not an, I mean, I, I know Roberts rules as well. I don't know the, I don't have yeah. that level of expertise, but I, I think the cleanest, easiest thing to do. I think when you have a motion with a second, it gets voted on. Yeah. So I think you, you vote on it. it if, if the board doesn't want to pass it, it doesn't pass. And then we can just go back to the um, policy subcommittee with the, with the recommended changes and just work with the legal firm. I, I, I suggest that we vote this one down for the moment. OK. So you vote on the any other motion. Any other conversation on it? And then it's a motion to approve and then the motion's already been made so just or, I mean, be a, a vote and i would i would recommend doing a roll call vote because okay okay i have a clarifying question for scott um scott are you in indicating that the structure of the document is such that it changes the meaning of the verbiage within the document a little bit yeah I mean, one place a lot in one place a little bit um, I would, just the only point i want to make is that it is strictly if it is structure that has no impact on the message our legal expenses do uh, right when every time we engage the shipment and good one, it costs us money. Right. Okay. Right. I, I think this one is in one case it's serious enough, and and when we went back to shipment and good with it, they did say, oh, actually this this might be better language. Okay. So that's that's included in my alternative. All right. Just want to clarify. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. So we'll do a roll call vote on this. Um, Carrie Carlino. I vote to approve it. Okay. Joe Coletti? Yes. Approved. Gabe Marks? Uh, yes. Pam Farrington? Yes. Amy Romanchuk? Yes. Scott Soyet? No. Mike Sharon? Yes. Kristen Erlinson? Yes. Heather Summer, I'm going to vote no. Mike Bollier? Uh, yes. And Drew Golfin? No. Okay. It's eight, yes, and yeah. Okay. The motion passes. So the motion passes eight to three. Okay, the next item on the agenda is possession and use of deadly weapons or firearms. 
We have a motion to adopt the revised policy 1435, the possession and use of deadly weapons and firearms <coughs> as presented. We have a motion. I'll make the motion. Second. I'll second. Carry. Discussion. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Motion passes. So I'll just take a few minutes to speak to the to the other three policies. So. One of the things that our policy uh, audit um, provided us feedback on is that we have a, a fair amount of policies that exist in our policy handbook um, that the attorneys uh, that we work with were recommending repeal for a variety of reasons, um, or at least consideration for repeal, as I should say. So um, there are um, the three policies, the first three policies, um, that we are looking at, uh, that we are recommending for repeal. And again, this was discussed by the policy subcommittee. It was done a first read last time, um, and I got no feedback on them uh, prior to the posting of the agenda, um, was they pertain to the student use of motor vehicles, leaving school grounds, and student dismissals. Those are all topics that are currently covered in the student handbook. And essentially, um, that was one of the pieces of feedback that the attorneys of Shipman gave to us was um, that, uh, if, if, if it's not a um, significant issue, it could be covered in a student handbook. It could be covered in a student handbook sufficiently. Um, the only other policy which uh, deals with uh, student interviews uh, is something that is addressed directly by building administration who do not provide access to students um, during the context of the school day. And um, we just simply don't do that. That's not our practice. So it would be a violation of FERP if we did. So. Um, we are recommending uh, the, <coughs> the policy subcommittee's recommendation, along with my recommendation, uh, was to uh, delete um, the uh, the policies that are in front of you, the four policies in front of you. So I, I would do the same thing. Okay. Okay. So we are up to 12.2D in your packet. Um, recommendation to delete the policy 5214, student use of motor vehicles. We have a motion. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, the motion passes. Okay, 12.2 E in your packet, leaving school grounds. A motion to delete policy 5212, leaving school grounds. So moved. Second. That was, Carrie, was that you? Yes, that was. Sorry. No and, worries. Uh, ooh, seconded. Second. Scott seconded. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, that motion passes. All right, that brings us to 12.2F in your packet, dismissal of students. Recommendation to delete the policy 5211, dismissal of students. Do you have a motion? So move, so move. Or second. Michael, second. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? The motion passes. 12.2G, student interviews. A motion to delete policy 5210, student interviews. Yeah. Move. Gabe. Gabe. Second. Second, Drew. Any discussion? All in favor? All right. Aye. Opposed? Abstentions? Motion passes. Okay, that brings us to new business. Um, so I think school, year calendar. school year calendar. So um, in, included in your board packet tonight is a copy of a draft calendar for um, 
next year's uh, uh, academic year. Um, I'll tell you that I, I work with uh, the three sending districts. So I work with the, the districts of Andover, Marlboro, and Hebron. I also uh, take a look and see what the EastCon calendar is looking like, and we try to coordinate with other neighboring districts as much as we can. Um, it, the, the calendar follows the same format. We have, we're starting um, prior to the Labor Day weekend. We have our three days prior to the start of school. We come in for a couple of days, have Labor Day off, and then we're in full swing. Um, I coordinate the early release days for professional development as well with the elementary school districts. And um, I would recommend that the calendar be approved by the board as presented. Okay. Um, do we have a motion? I'll make it all. So moved. <laughs> Seconded. Drew? Okay. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Okay, passes the Board of Ed meeting dates. So uh, the next uh, enclosure in your packet is the draft of the Regional School District 8 Board of Education meeting dates. So um, we always set the meeting uh, for next January um, when we do our meeting for the calendar year. So this has um, uh, the meeting dates from February of 2024 to January of 2025. Uh, we followed the same format, which is typically the third Thursday. There are some, I'm sorry, that's called return from vacation. On, uh, August. <laughs> the, the third Monday of, um, of most months. And you can see, we do uh, note when it is different from that. We do have one first Monday. Um, that is strictly for the, um, the presentation of the budget that we're required to do by policy um, on April 1st for our public budget hearing. Um, and then we do have uh, a couple of second Mondays and a few fourth Mondays. And that's just because of holidays or um, other events that are, are interrupting that third uh, Wednesday, oh, third Monday of each month. So um, I would uh, recommend, uh, unless there's any questions or concerns with it, so I would recommend uh, the board uh, considering adopted, adopted so is there is is this in stone or because i already have a conflict or two so how do how do we address that right I, i'm going to actually be out of the country for, you don't have to attend every single meeting is one consideration yeah yeah so. i mean it, yeah i mean I'd, I'd like to though yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah i agree yeah so i mean I don't, I don't know how people feel about that um you know, in particular, I'm a little concerned about the May 20th meeting because that might have budget issues that still need to be resolved. Is that possible? And I'm actually going to be out of the country on that day. For how long? I'm I'm actually in Greece from May 14th to June 1st. I would say that over the last two budget seasons, we have not our budget has passed. It, it, okay. the, first, the first go around. Now that's not to say that that's going to happen every year. Can you I don't knock on wood right now? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, but um, it would, it's highly likely that any budgetary meetings that we would need to have would be called immediately that week thereafter. Um, and so we would look to resolve that as, as quickly as possible. Early in May then, so that wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, I, I, I can't promise you that it won't carry right. into the regular meeting, but the, the regular meetings do traditionally have their own agendas that are not budgetary. Okay. So. All right, well, that's good to know, right? Because I want to do my job. <laughs> yeah, I mean, May 20th is, is not intended to cover any, any budgetary. No, but like there's oh. no, our budget meetings that we scheduled are not in the here at all. Not, yeah. Okay. Great. Yeah, so you'll. Between now and April, so. There'll be budget workshops that'll be scheduled that are in addition to what you see on this, right? right. This is intended to cover um, regular meetings and uh, public and district budgetary meetings, right? So there are others that, that will be held. Um, uh, tr traditionally, every year, um, the department heads will come in and, and put together and present a proposal that talks about why they're asking for the budget that they're asking for for that particular year. So we get to hear directly from the folks that are that are preparing those those requests, and so those will be added to the to the calendar as well. Good. Okay. Great. Carrie. 
Hi, sorry, I just want to add a comment. I just, I think we need to just be cognizant that a lot of us and our schedules don't always align. And as much as all of us are here to do what's best, we can't always make everything. So, you know, I, I think it's important for all the new members to realize there's no judgment in that. And that we also need to be very cognizant of the schedules of the superintendent as well. And all the evening meetings that occur. So that's just my two cents. Good. Excellent. I'm happy. Drew, there's <laughs> always a dialer too, by the way. Yeah. I know you may I'm be sure you'll want to do some drinks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll call in okay. six hours okay. later. <laughs> okay. So we have a motion to approve the 2024 Board of Ed meeting dates. We have a motion. Oh. What? Uh, Dave. Dave. I'll suck it. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any abstentions? Okay. Aye. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah, so the next item for the agenda is um, just a first high level presentation that I put together related to budget. Um, So the first slide just highlights Board of Education. Oh, my bad. Oh, never mind. Okay. Uh, just the first slide highlights Board of Education Policy 3110, uh, which talks about the fact that um, at our December meeting, which we're having, of course, in January, we're supposed to do a high uh, to do a, a, a presentation just to kind of discuss um, some things that are going to have an impact on the budget. So we wanted to make sure that we put this together to, to meet that uh, objective. Next slide, please, Eric. I won't read these. I'm, I try not to be per, a person that reads slides as they get presented, but um, this just talks about some of the different diff, uh, commitments in the district, um, which guide our budget planning process. And I just think they're important to bring to the surface. Next slide, please, Eric. So this is something I, I, I do want to spend a little bit of time talking about because it's it's something it's a drum that I've been beating since I got hired here. Um, I, I think that RAM for many years has been uh, seeing declining enrollment. Um, it's been something that, that I heard a lot about when I, uh, was hired uh, to come into the district. And it's something that I have continued to hear about, um, you know, enrollments declining, enrollments declining. And the reason I think it's important to highlight this is because I think that oftentimes people think when there's declining enrollment, there should be significant budgetary, um, reductions. And, um, I just wanted to make sure that I point out that that's really not an accurate narrative in the sense of. We are going to see some slight declining over the next couple of years, but we have seen a <coughs> substantial increase at the elementary levels over the past handful of years, primarily in Hebron. Um, but Marlboro is also seeing a, a, an increase in in, um, uh, in enrollment as well. The elementary schools and those enrollment increases at the elementary levels are making their way up to our district. Uh, Dr. Sharusi at the middle school, I think, is going to hold steady for the next year or two, and then he's going to start to see an uptick. Um, at the high school, they're going to see a decrease over the next few years by what I would consider not to be a significant amount. Um, and these are our enrollment projections. So our current enrollment for um, October 1, 2023 is 1,148. That's our that's the number that we provide to the state. That's what we use as our our state reported enrollment numbers. Um, and you can see if you look at the projected enrollment, so that gives, uh, you can see that at grade 7 through 12, um, which is the second column over from the far right, you can see that we're slated to go down by about 30 students. Uh, we're projected to go down by about 30 students for next year. And then we're going to go down, again, we're projected to go down by um, approximately 40 students the year after that. And then we hold steady and then we start to see an enrollment uptick. Um, and I just think that it's really important that we talk about that and make sure that it's something that we really put on the forefront of people's minds because um, we are not a district that's seeing a decline in enrollment anymore. No, we're not seeing that substantial decline in enrollment. We're not anticipating it. 
the numbers at the elementary level are real. I, I talked to, to Tom Baird and Holly Hageman, the superintendents for Hebron and Marlboro on a regular basis, and, and I know those kids are going to be coming up here. Um, so, in, in fact, if you look, our 10-year projection has us um, at almost uh, 200 more students that, than what we are, are currently slated, that what we currently have right now. So, and, and I think it's also important to point out as RAMS in projected enrollment is going up by 200 students over the next 10 years, you could see that the projected enrollment for K-6 is projected to go by another 300. And I just, that, so that trend of increasing enrollment based off of projections is not looking like it's going to slow down anytime soon. Um, uh, if you want to go to the next slide for me, please, Eric. So I thought it was just important to provide board members with a, a, a timeline to date. So um, it, it's it's pretty remarkable to think about. Um, it it kind of hits you pretty quick when you when I started. I remember being how, uh, how how surprised I was when I started here last year. Eva said we need to get on the calendar and, and start distributing the the budget book uh, to administrators and department coordinators and budget owners so that they could start the process of putting their budgets together. And we begin that process in early uh, October. <laughs> Um, we, uh, Eva, Eva and myself meet and the building principals meet with all department coordinators to review the department budget, uh, each department budget and discuss needs. Um, Eva and I also meet with the athletic director, pupil services director, facilities director, and director of uh, tech and communication to do the same thing. Um, we update our personnel budget um, in during the month of November based off of what we anticipate needing for the following year. Um, and then obviously we're at this point right now where we are sharing our, um, any significant budget drivers for next year. Um, next slide, please, Eric. So priorities in budget planning, uh, they, they remain the same as what I had for last year, which is to support academic and social. <coughs> um, you know, RAM, the next one is RAM has uh, what I would call to be a, a program of studies that is envied by many other school districts. You know, we were just talking about uh, RAM being a, a desirable school to come to. And one of those reasons is because we have such a, a wide array of classes and opportunities for our students with our program of studies. And we always are looking to uh, expand upon that. Uh, we want to make sure that we're utilizing the best uh, curriculum and instructional practices. Um, a big thing is to improve or maintain facilities and grounds. I, I think that um, RAM is often talked about and referred to as the new school, um, which comparatively speaking um, to buildings in Hebron and Marlboro and Andover, it, it is. Um, those superintendents like to tease me and call RAM the Taj Mahal. Mm -hmm. um, but RAM is also 20 years old at this point. And, and uh, you know, Mike, as the facilities subcommittee chair, could talk about this, but we're looking at the some major mechanical systems reaching the end of their um, anticipated shelf life uh, right around 20 years. So we're talking about significant um, investments in the not so distant future um, for uh, related to facilities, um, just maintaining and improving those. And then obviously the last bullet um, is, is certainly uh, of utmost importance, which is to uh, ensure a safe and school environment for students. Uh, next slide, please, Eric. So there are factors certainly influencing uh, the 24-25 operating budget um, inflation, uh, much in the same way that is inflation, inflation is affecting everybody's lives at this moment. Um, it's certainly affecting our, our budget, um, and, and we're, we're seeing increased costs for goods and materials, increased costs for labor uh, for, with contractors, um, and we're anticipating <coughs> increases for utility costs as well. Um, some other things that are impacting us are uh, an anticipated decrease in excess cost funding. Um, the district receives grant funding called the excess cost grant uh, from the state on a yearly basis, and it is for, and correct me if I'm wrong on this, um, it is for uh, large special ed costs that the district has to incur. Um, the, the, the state tries to help alleviate some of that financial burden of those significant special ed costs. And so we uh, get money from the state every year and we're seeing a decrease in the amount of money. So it's a decrease in revenue essentially for us is, is gonna have an impact. 
Um, with regards to special education, out of district placements is going to have an impact on our budget for next year because we're we, we're going to have an increase in the number of uh, special education out of district placements, and we're also going to see an increase in the tuition costs for the schools that we are where we have those students in out placements. Um, we're also for special education seeing an increase in transportation costs. Um, health insurance is a big driver. So I will tell you that um, this is something that we've had a lot of conversation about. So for those of you that are not aware of it, um, RAM participates in a regional insur insurance consortium. So we are, we are self-insured along with a, 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 a large number of other entities. We, the three other school districts that feed into RAM, AHM, and then the three towns that feed into RAM as well. So we are all part of an insur insurance consortium. And so, um, and again, correct me if I'm wrong, if I say anything, Eve is good about doing that. Um, so through what I would call strategic and well thought out um, use of reserve funding that we have had over the past handful of years, um, we have been able to suppress the insurance increases from one year to the next. So through uh, uh, low claims, good management of money, we've had a surplus of, of, of money in our in our insurance healthcare reserve, right? So we have to keep a certain dollar amount, Eva could get into the details, but we're required by the consortium to keep a certain dollar amount to pay claims that come in. And we had a certain dollar amount that was above that number. And so the consortium was very strategic in how they used that money to suppress insurance cost increases over the past probably three or four years. We've, and I say that just to give you context, we've had a zero in that time period. I think last year we were 1.5, like so last year to this year we were 1.5. We're looking at a 12.5 currently. That's a, that's a substantial number and it's gonna be, a, it's gonna impact the budget. It's not to say that that's the dollar amount where we are going to land in the end um, we meet monthly as an insurance consortium and we adjust the number depending on a number of things, what claims are looking like and how much money we have left in the reserve, right? So we, we look at that. So that's not necessarily where we're going to land, but that's where we are right now. And it's important to note, we're, it's not looking like we're going to have a 1.5. Like last year at this time, we were at a 4 or 5 or a 5, 5. So last year at this time, we were at a 4% increase. We got it down to a 1.5. Right now we're at 12.5. So that just gives you a little bit of an idea of it's going to be different this year. And then obviously there's just contracts that we have with different bargaining units and contractual increases are, uh, are going to have an impact on the budget. Um, so so as, as far as staffing changes from 22-23 to 23-24, um, and I realized I didn't change that in the last slideshow because it's it should be from 23-24 to 24-25, and I apologize for that typo. Um, but we uh, we are looking at, a, 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 I will have, when I officially present the budget in January, there's going to be some proposed changes that I have from a staffing standpoint, which uh, I just wanted to highlight now. Uh, this is the first bullet is something that we've discussed in the past, which is the sharing of the occupational therapist services with another district. Um, Currently, we have a contract with an occupational therapist. Uh, contracted employees um, are generally uh, higher costs than having the employee um, having an employee of our own. Um, so we're looking to employ a 1.0 FTE of an occupational therapist for next year, and actually subcontract them out to another local school district at a 0.4 FTE. So we would have they'd be our employee but we would share the cost with another school district. So it's a good opportunity for us to save money on the contractor and then be able to um, reap a little bit of revenue by contracting that person out. Um, one of the things that I'm gonna propose in the operating budget for this coming school year too is to create a director of curriculum and instruction 12 month administrative position. So um, last year the board was, um, Last year, the board uh, was uh, supportive of the idea of creating a position called a curriculum coordinator instructional coach position. It is a 10 month teaching position uh, in the teacher's bargaining unit. Um, it has been a very, very uh, um, beneficial position to have in the limited time that it's existed. Um, but I think that I hinted at it last year that that was a it was a step in the direction of what I had hoped to ultimately achieve, which was to 
reinstate the director of curriculum 12 month position that was eliminated uh dr shirusi five years ago five years ago the position was eliminated through the budgetary process and i will say that i think um it's it's detrimental to the district to not have a full-time 12-month uh, administrator whose primary focus is on improving curriculum and instructional practices. Um, and, and the board uh, saw a, a, a presentation on our data achievement, on our student achievement data, and uh, it, it was not as what we would have typically expected it. And I think that is a confluence of a variety of factors. Um, but I think that one of the one of those factors, not not the only factor, but one of those factors is the fact that we haven't had somebody in that position for, for the past several years. Um, and I think it would be incredibly beneficial for us to to bring that position back into existence. Um, another known position that, again, I'm going to propose to the board uh, at our at our um, January meeting our, our meeting in a few weeks is the addition of clerical support for the facilities office. Um, going back to what I was talking about earlier is, this is a building that is aging. Um, and there is, I don't have the data for you now, uh, but I'm gonna, when we come in January, we come back together later in January, I will have some numbers about the amount of, uh, the financial impact that we spend on facilities improvements um, projects that we do, and it is significant. And right now, our facilities department is a department of one. We have Michael Schlehofer, who's been here for uh, several, several years as our director of facilities. Um, and he does, he not only does, manages the projects, but he's doing the, the clerical work that is necessary for project management. And it's, those projects are only gonna increase over the next handful of years. And I think having clerical support for, for that office is gonna be uh, critically important. Um, I'll just simply say that, and this is more for our newer board members, um, I, I absolutely anticipate, and veteran board members, I anticipate continuing the process that we did last year with the administrators, which is looking at every resignation and retirement that comes across our, our, our desk and saying, is this a position that we need to replace at this point, right? That's, that's a, a critical conversation that we're having. We, the board approved the consent agenda of a resignation of a health and phys ed teacher, right? Um, I will tell you, I've had lengthy conversations with the high school administration. We need to replace that position. Um, we won't be able to, to meet student needs and, and have enough classes if we don't do that. Um, last year, as, as, as many of you know, we had a, a resignation of a, of a world language teacher. We were able to figure it out that we didn't need to replace that position. So every single position that we look at that is a known retirement or resignation, we say, is this a position that we need to replace? I have every expectation of continuing that process. So if we get unexpected or unanticipated resignations or retirement through the duration of this school year, we're going to, we're going to analyze those positions and, and there could be some different staffing changes as we go through the rest of the budget process. But I just wanted to make sure I mentioned that. Um, Eric, if you could do the next slide for me, please. Um, so, so this is just a slide that I wanted to cover capital. Um, so our, our current adopted capital budget is uh, $540,990. Um, I think the, the, the capital um, plan for each year and the capital budget for each year has tried to be around $500,000 over the past several years. And it's been incredibly beneficial to the district because we do have aging facilities that we do need to maintain and improve. Um, we are gonna, we do, right now we have a, um, an, a, we have approximately $3 million in identified capital needs right now on our capital list. Um, we are going through the process of uh, having, uh, we're about to initiate, I should say, the process of having a building evaluation done of both of our entire facility um, to get a more updated um, idea of what our capital uh, budget should be. The, the last time a survey was done for the district was in 2015. And so we're, we're working with information that is almost 10 years old at this point. And so the board had the foresight to say, hey, listen, we need to get an updated capital, uh, a budget uh, building survey done. And, uh, and we're about to embark on that process. And I think it's gonna be really helpful to have it. So, our number is 3,100,000 right now. It, it, it could 
it could go up, and I would anticipate that it will after uh, that that survey is done. Um, the uh, it could go down also. It, it could. It could. <laughs> it could. We don't. Yes. Um, so capital. Uh, so our, our current balance for capital non recurring is uh, six hundred and seventeen thousand four hundred ninety four as of November thirtieth. The majority of these funds are earmarked for addressing the athletic fields. Um, that's been a project that we have been working on for the past several years, um, at least trying to get the projects going. Um, and we're anticipating some work being uh, started on that this coming spring. Um, just I wanted to note that we we do not yet have the specific amount of the 22 23 surplus funds from the operating budget, uh, but we it's we should know that by our February board meeting and 2% of those surplus funds can be allocated towards uh, our capital non recurring account. And so um, the board will ultimately have to make a decision when we know what our surplus was from last uh, fiscal year, um, it, how we want to utilize that money. Uh, next slide, please, Eric. So the next steps in the budget timeline are we have a facility subcommittee meeting tomorrow night um, to discuss our capital budget for next year. Um, that again, that's going to be a virtual meeting that happens tomorrow. Um, we are going to have, uh, we're slated to have a presentation, a more formal and comprehensive presentation of next year's budget to the board on uh, January 22nd. Uh, we, we have, as uh, Mike Sharon alluded to, there are budget workshops that take place over the course of January and February. We have two that we have definitively scheduled for the 29th and the 5th, and we have an alternative date of 12 to, uh, I'm sorry, 212 if necessary, or it also could, might not be an alternative date, it could be an additional date. If there's more information that the board needs after our uh, February 5th meeting, we could um, certainly decide to have that meeting on the 12th if necessary. Um, we have a regular board meeting on the 26th. Um, I'm working right now to schedule workshops with towns, with the three different towns. Um, I've been in touch with uh, different people from the different towns trying to get those on the books. Usually those happen in mid to late March. And what I do is I go and I do a presentation on the ramp board budget to uh, our, our three sending towns, uh, either the Board of Finance, the Board of Selectmen, or both. Um, we have a public budget hearing on uh, the 1st, and then we have our annual budget meeting and our budget referendum in the um, I can certainly take any questions if people have any, uh, but that concludes my presentation. At this time. Just a quick scheduling question. Yep. Um, the budget workshops, if I remember, those are just the meetings where the program coordinators come in and present their uh, program, you know, math department, correct. department coordinators. That's the correct term, right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. I was trying to jog my memory. Yeah. So it's a, it's a great reminder. It, so it's a, uh, the department coordinators, the different directors, or athletic director, our facilities director, they'll come and they'll present their budgets. They'll, they'll present a small number of slides on their specific budgets. Um, last year, we did that over the course of three meetings. Some of those meetings were very brief, like 45 minutes. And I felt it would be more practical to, instead of having three meetings of 45 minutes, to have maybe two meetings of an hour and 20 minutes or an hour and a half just for people scheduling. Um, but as I said, if, if the need is there to go on and have a third meeting again, we can certainly do that. Are these the usual 6.30 time? Correct. So um, the $3 million, is that what you anticipate for over 10 years? It's, it's not even a, I don't even know if there's a definitive timeline on it. So that's the remaining amount of capital that needs to had based on the 2015 facility survey that occurred. Okay. So that's the cost items that projects. we have not touched yet that are still in place. But we only have the 540 budgeted for the year. Correct. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> and that and that plan that was done in 2015 or I shouldn't say the plan, but the the list that was created from the from 2015 since 2015, things have been added to it. We've identified things over the past nine years and said, well, this should go in the capital because it's a large ticket item. So, um, 
you know, we've tackled a lot of the things over the course of the past handful of years because the board has been good and the voters have been supportive of having approximately five hundred thousand dollars. But the, unfortunately, each each year the the list gets gets bigger. Yeah, I mean, for folks that aren't familiar with what that survey consists of, it, it's an audit of the facility, basically, right? We're looking at all the systems, the water system, the gas system, the HVAC, the drains, the sidewalks, the parking lot, everything, right? And so archit architects and engineers come in and they do an estimate as to the life expectancy of, of all of those systems. And that's what goes in. And they do an estimate as to the cost to replace and repair and maintain those systems. And that was that's the report that uh, Colin's referring to. It's about nearly ten years old. Now. So we're looking to have that refreshed. I think we're in the process of doing that right now. Um, we're we're yeah, so we've identified the contractor. That okay, we're it's actually in the in tonight, uh, It is agenda. So um, I think it'll be beneficial to us. There may be some systems that are doing better than we anticipated, mm -hmm. and there may be some that um, well maybe are not. So, but I think it's best that we have the most up to date information. So the board collectively endorsed going forward and doing it. Is there a suggested general cadence for having such a you know overall overview like that? If That's a good ten, question. Ten years is that too much? It should it be on a five year schedule or something? I, I don't know what the industry standard is. I don't know if there's an industry standard, but uh, I think that we're going to have a pretty good feel on whether or not that was sufficient when we get the results of the of yeah. this survey. So I would suggest that if, if we see a pretty big difference um, and then maybe we might want to consider uh, either increasing or, or decreasing the period of time in between doing so. So that's a good question. Uh, any comments from online? Okay, so the next thing is a discussion of the contract. Yeah, so, so I could. Um, speak to that real quick and then Mike Schleyhofer is, is attending virtually as well. Um, also in your packet tonight are several memos related to uh, RFPs that were recently put out by the district for certain projects uh, and work that needs to be done for the district. Um, and so uh, I'm going to refer, we'll go through these one at a time and I'll just do a quick explanation and then if there's a, somebody wants to put a motion on the table or if we could I can answer any questions and we can go through the process of seeing if there's a interest in doing a motion. So the, the first enclosure is 13.4A uh, and it is a, a bid award related to the central office rooftop replacement unit. Um, so this is a project that was a part of our capital plan for this year. Um, so we had budgeted $125,000 to um, have this, um, uh, have the rooftop, the rooftop um, replace, uh, re unit replaced. Um, for uh, both heating and air conditioning, mm -hmm. and um, humidity is a big reason of it as well. It's super. <laughs> the humidity in the central office space is. It's lovely. It's yeah, it's wonky at best. Um, so um, again, the the budgeted amount for this project was one hundred twenty five thousand dollars. Our our most. Um, our lowest qualified responsible bidder came in at ninety four thousand and twenty six dollars, so which is a which is a good win for us. Um, and basically, uh, there you know there could be a motion um, from a board member to um, authorize me to go into executing contract. But Michael is on the hopefully Michael's there, um, and we can certainly try to answer any questions if people have it about that specific project. Yes, Colin, I'm available if anybody has any questions. What's the expected lifespan of the replacement? Uh, Michael, did you hear that? Yes, um, expected lifespan replacement is 20 years. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, do we have a motion to um, authorize the superintendent, Colin McNamara, to finalize and execute a contract with Action Air Systems, Inc. for the central office rooftop replacement unit? Make the motion. Scott? I'll second. Mike? Any other discussion? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anybody abstain? Okay. So uh, I'll refer next to enclosure 13.4B, which is uh, which relates to the bid award for snow removal. 
So our snow removal services contract expires uh, at the conclusion of this fiscal year, uh, June 30th, 2024. Um, so we put out an RFP for that um, for that work to be done. Uh, the uh, again, um, uh, the lowest qualified reasonable bidder came in with uh, from EA Quinn. Um, it would be a five year contract. Um, our current just just from a fine, I want to make sure people understand the finances because it's not a part of this memo. So our current um, yearly cost for snow removal is eighty four thousand four hundred sixty dollars. Um, that cost actually would remain the same for the next three years. Their bid has the has the same cost for the next three years, and then it would increase to eighty six thousand dollars for the remaining two years of the contract. So um, uh, again, lowest qualified reasonable bidder. And, and Michael and I can certainly answer any questions that people might have. Okay, do we have a motion to authorize the superintendent Colin McNamara to finalize and execute a contract with EA Quinn for snow removal services? So moved, Dave Marks. Second. Second. Drew, any, any other discussion for Michael or? Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Anyone abstain? <coughs> so the next one, uh, the next memo in your packet is 13.4C. That is the bid award for landscaping services. Um, similar to the snow removal, it expires on June 30th. Um, a different contractor, local choice landscaping's bid submission was the lowest qualified reasonable bidder. Um, this was Shockingly and happily good news. Uh, our current contract is $80,000 per year. Their bid uh, was $79,000 for each year of the five-year contract. Uh, and again, Michael and I can certainly entertain any questions that board members might have. Hey, do we have a motion to authorize the superintendent, Colin McNamara, to finalize and execute a contract with Local Choice Landscaping for landscaping services? So, a second. A second. Mike and Mike again. <laughs> I know I've got my little okay. initials yeah. here. Okay, any discussion on that? <coughs> pause, pause. Okay. All right. So, uh, yeah, no you have to vote on it. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I get my sleep. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anyone abstain? We're going to make it We are, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're supposed to keep me straight. So the, the next enclosure is 13.4D. And, and <coughs> um, Mike Schlehoffer, mm -hmm. would you mind speaking to this one a little bit? Because I, I think that you could probably explain this a little bit better than I could. I could certainly do my best, but you probably could could explain this one. This this one actually relates to the building survey that, that um, we were just discussing related to, to CIP planning. Sure. So um, the the... The facility assessment that'll that'll take place through um, through Alpha is thirty thousand um, dollars. It'll cover again um, the exterior systems, interior systems, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, electrical and the electrical distribution systems, uh, the plumbing systems, the fire protection systems. They'll look at the elevators, and then they'll do a site. Um, survey of pavement and sidewalks. Um, and again, that's for $30,000. Um, then there's an additional um, two options that I discussed with the facility subcommittee that would require additional funding for, it's what they call equipment inventory and barcoding. So they'll tag all the high valued items, such as your boilers, your chillers, all your air handler units, assign them um, barcodes and ID numbers, and they'll give that to the district in a, an Excel form that then can be uploaded into um, a work order program. They're also going to, for that fee, um, supply us with a PM schedule for such equipment as well. That will then also be um, be able to be upgraded or uploaded up into the 
fourth order system. So the total for the program would be about 38,947. Do we um, have a motion to authorize the superintendent, Colin McNamara, to finalize and execute a contract with Alpha Facility Solutions for the building survey for CIP planning? Before we go, though, I just want to know what's what's covered with the, you know, how, what, what sort of thing of our barcode, obviously boilers and things like that, but it can't be down as far as staplers. So what... What's the smallest sorts of things that's covered by this? Uh, so what they list is the heating, air conditioning, ventilation, so your air handlers, your boilers, your automated building system, your chillers, uh, chilled water, hot water circulation pumps that are greater than one horsepower, your cooling towers, cooling tower pumps greater than one horsepower, uh, your energy recovery units, your exhaust fans on the rooftop only, package units, heater ventilators, Furnaces, heat pumps, uh, electrical, main distribution panels, switch gears, trash compactors that are permanently installed, uh, your, cur your uh, commercial kitchen equipment, such as your boilers, your walk ins, your refrigerators, dishwashers, um, plumbing, main backflow preventers, domestic, um, water booster pumps, sub pumps, storage tanks, life safety, such as your fire alarm panel, your sprinkler system, um, fire suppression for the kitchen, fire pump, extinguishers, um, AEDs, eyewashed fire, uh, eyewashes, your elevators, and then um, commercial overhead uh, garage doors and openers. Okay, thank you. all part of that list. <clears throat> Any other questions? Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Anyone abstain? Yep. So we need a motion to approve the reallocation of $8,947 from capital non recurring unallocated to the capital non recurring building survey project. We have a motion. So, second. A second. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anyone abstain? Okay. So now we're up to 13.5A in the handouts. So 13.5A is your expenditure and revenue report as of November 30th, 2023. Um, I'm currently in a, uh, there is a proposed net favorable position of 141,441,000. ,441 this is approximately a little less than 25,000 um, that was reported in the month of no at November 4th meeting. Um, we have received the magnet school tuition um, payments and we are we were paying them. Unfortunately, the half day programs were still are, the invoices are still outstanding, but we only have three students that are half day. So I'm not anticipating that too much more is coming down that pike. Um, for capital improvement fund, the desk collection system was supposed to be finished on 1230, but I don't know if that has been accomplished yet or not. The central office HVAC system. Um, the contract would be approved as it was tonight. And the building survey contract was awarded and should have been approved tonight, which it was. Um, thank you for those. And the capital non-recurring fund is currently focusing on the remaining project. So the field and drainage repair did go out to bid. It was posted on 12-22 Friday. And um, we have a bid walkthrough on this coming Wednesday. Uh, in the pupil services department after each IEP or individual education plan meeting for students will review purchase orders to make sure that the services tuition and or any changes are captured um, so that everything is encumbered in the financial system correctly and we can account for students. 
Are there any questions that the board may have at this time? So, so what are magnet school tuitions? So we, in the state of Connecticut, because of Chef versus O'Neill, um, have to send, not have to send, um, we, the districts, have to pay for our, sending our students to various districts. Um, so Crack itself runs numerous magnet schools. Um, I feel like there's another. Um, I can't think of another one, but there's there's somebody down here. There's a lot of them on that Route 2 corridor, and parents have the ability to register their students to go to these schools, and then we have to pay the tuition costs. Okay. Students. Interesting. How many students? Who, off the top of my head, I don't know, but I can get that I, for you for the next meeting. Oh yeah, I don't. Yeah. I was I was just yeah. looking for scale. I mean, five, a hundred. Oh no, there's there's a lot, but we also pay for Boag and Agri Science. Or, no, we don't pay for Boag. We pay for the Agri Science. So Lyman. Um, program and glass degrees program also and there's about 10 kids in those well, i can i can get yeah. the numbers and share it with everybody. yeah that'd be great it's kind of curious yeah. any other questions okay so moving on we have 13.5 b which is um, a flexible spending account that um, we are allowed to provide to our employees and the IRS has increased limits. So as part of um, the agreement that is attached, there's a certain, well, it's not the agreement, it's a certificate of resolution. Um, we want to keep up with the IRS limits so that our employees can maximize their um, flexible spending accounts. Um, so it is increased to 3,200 from the current of 3,050. So we're asking for to, um, allow uh, um, the superintendent to enter to to sign off that 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 you guys are okay with our increase increase in that amount. So <coughs> that could be really helpful. these yeah. are funded by the, the, the employees staff. themselves yeah yeah i'm surprised it needs board approval yeah because we have somebody else who um watches our plan for us, it's a third party that watches our plan. They just have to make sure that the, the board is okay with oh, any okay. Yeah, sure. So we need a motion to allow the district's plan to increase the contribution limits from the current amount to match the new limit as set per the IRS to $3,200 for the calendar year 2024. So moved. Drew, second. second. Person. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Anyone abstain? Thank you for that. 13.5C um, is your food service monthly sales and expenditure report for November 30th, November 30th 2023. Um, an update to this is um, the supply chain the third allocation has finally arrived and we received $32,091.46 as opposed to the 30968 that was in the memo that was written. Um, this helps with the inflationary costs on food and um, in October that was around 8% was what the inflationary cost was. As you can see on the flip side of that page, um, as of late, as of the, this time, as of November 30th, sorry, um, the program itself in this calendar year, in, or fiscal year, is running at a loss of 91822000 But the 32000 that we just received negates that loss somewhat. Are there any questions on the report? So hearing none, I'm going to move on. 13.5D um, is the... A RAM middle and high school student activity report. And so the report balances and matches to the bank statement. Um, so each activity or class is allowed to have funds that benefit the students directly. So there are um, they're usually fundraised funds, um, class dues, other ways that um, the students can get money, prom tickets, those kind of things that that fund that these are the funds for them yearbook sales 
So are there any questions on your college student activity? Okay, so hearing none, the 13.5E is a short-term investment fund account. So last fiscal year, there was a decision made by the Board of Education to invest $300,000 of our capital non-recurring funds. Since they were we're just going to be sitting in the bank, we figured this was going to be a better investment as opposed to having just regular bank interest. So um, I feel like the board made a wonderful decision because we seem to be doing well in this department. So as of November, what was what was reinvested, the dividend reinvestment was $1,572.89. The second page is the statement, and the third page shows you the historical rates for the month of November. And um, as you can see, the annualized rate increased from November 1st to November 30th. Are there any questions that the board may have on that? Thank you. Okay, so the next thing on the agenda are the committee reports. So, facility safety transportation. All right, we're going to start. Up. All right, so we're uh, meeting tomorrow, January 4th, uh, at 6 o'clock, I think, maybe. Uh, and the plan is to go through uh, the initial proposal for uh, <coughs> uh, 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 budgetary needs for the 24 25 uh, uh, school budget or district budget. Um, but one of the things that I, I did want to expand on a little bit is. Um, Ava talked about um, the fact that we have some RFQs going out right now for one of the athletic fields and the perimeter drains around that athletic field. Um, some of you may have heard that over the course of the last five years, there's been a number of initiatives that are focused on making improvements to the athletic fields here on the grounds. The focus of those areas were primarily the, the comp field, which is the, the football field that's on the inside perimeter of the track. In addition to that, though, there's a baseball outfield, which is the next field up. If you drive along the side of the building here, you notice that the fields are tiered. Uh, so comp field being at the bottom, baseball outfield is the mid uh, area. And then at the top is the 316 fields, uh, north and south, or is it east and west? North east and west, north, north and south. south. And that's broken into two sections. That's really uh, practice surfaces. Uh, it takes a, a pretty good beating, but it keeps the folks from tearing up the comp field. Right? whether they're playing lacrosse, soccer, football, whatever it happens, field hockey, whatever it happens to be. Well, the fields are in somewhat of a state of disrepair. Drainage is a significant issue, which is what's primarily contributing to the problems that, that we're seeing. Uh, standing water, things of that nature. Uh, and the track surface itself is, uh, is really just showing its age. So we went through an effort uh, and brought in a, a company to do some testing on each of these areas and provide us with but what they saw as estimated costs to prepare each of these surfaces, and they gave us a number of options. Um, we went out to quote last year, and I'm, yes. I'm pausing to be corrected just in case. Uh, and the the quotes came back extremely high, much higher than what was projected by the company that we hired to come in and do the assessment. Now, the, I will also clarify that the replacement or the repairs are intended to be a natural surface. Some of what you may be familiar with is a referendum vote uh, from three years ago, which was to come in and put in a uh, artificial surface. Um, so the message was loud and clear coming out of that referendum vote. And so we were looking to pursue natural, natural surface repairs. Nevertheless, uh, some of the feedback that we received was that the manner in which we packaged or coupled uh, the improvement uh, requests in our, in our RFQ may have uh, put, um, uh, activities that were not necessarily within the, the uh, uh, experience level of the vendors that were coming in to, to make the proposals on these areas. We had uh, a perimeter drain, and then we also had uh, a very specialized surface uh, treatment and application where we were going to uh, do some um, <coughs> addition of material, some slicing of the surface, some overseeding, 
um, the company that came in quoted both of those. And so the feedback that we got was that we likely eliminated uh, our list of potential contractors and essentially limited the competition that we were looking for. So we feel like that combined with coming out of COVID may have contributed to some pretty high bids. Nevertheless, it sounds like we're going back out for some bids on at least the perimeter drains and we're going to do, we're shooting for both of them. We just okay. re redesigned what the language was. Okay. Got the timing it. was another factor. Just the yeah. timing was the, the timing of when we wanted the project to start. Right. It was a timing it was, is sensitive due to the fact that you have field usage that, that is in need, right? Not only for practice, but for, for game. Uh, game, you know, actual games. Um, and so we needed to make sure that the timing of the repairs was such that not only when the work was being performed, but the recovery of the surface would support uh, timely use of, of the area. So I wanted to give you all some background. You're going to hear a little bit more about it. You're going to see there are requests for uh, funds coming up to pay for some of this activity. Um, included in, in at least the Collins initial uh, review of some of the financials that we have to look forward to when we go through our budget season is uh, the non-recurring capital uh, fund, which has a little over 600000 maybe $650,000 in it. That's essentially been earmarked for these projects that I'm describing for you right now. So I wanted to give you a, a brief update on, on some, and some background on what, the, what we're doing, what we've been up to for the past couple of years in response to the, uh, to the failed referendum measure to, to come in with artificial. So we're looking for some competitive quotes to, to move forward on, on those plans that I'm discussing. Is there lighting also included in the original proposal? There, there was lighting included in, in the, the original proposal as well. The one that went to referendum. Right. There was uh, lighting. There was um, uh, there was a turf. And bleachers. Bleachers. And bleachers. bleachers uh, and a uh, place to buy. No, I don't think no, the concession stand. That was when we originally opened this building or built. The okay. Building. That's where the concession. Are there lights? No concessions. Are there lights there now? There are not. There are no. not lights there now. So lights are back on the table or off? No, lights are not. They're not back on the table. Um, and, and Part of the reason for that in, in assessing whether or not that was something that the committee wanted to pursue was that in the event that we need lights, we can rent them okay. for, for not a significant cost because it's not, uh, not every sport is looking to utilize nighttime. Um, we do currently, uh, there are some nighttime games, but they are way games. Mm -hmm. right? um, so it, trying to, to maintain fiscal conservative and then lights were, were up beyond our needs mm -hmm. at this time. Okay. For, for the few nights a year that they would get used. Yeah. Well, I, I also think um, people like the idea of Friday night lights. They, they you know, they enjoy that experience. I, I One concern that I would have about lights is when you have lights on a field, you have usually a strong, not only school desire to use it, but you have a strong community desire to use the field too. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have turf, um, the field could get chewed up pretty quick. So if we ever put lights on, and then we had a lot of youth football, youth soccer, youth lacrosse saying, we want to, yeah. there's potential revenue for field uh, usage, um, but there's the downside of, then the field could get over, over, overused, <laughs> overused pretty, pretty darn quick, so. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so next is finance, audit, compliance, and insurance, and that's um, on the last minute standing. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be joining you guys tomorrow for, for that discussion. And, and if I could just interrupt, Jeff. So just all of our subcommittee meetings are, are generally held virtually. Um, and, and even um, board members, even if you're not on a subcommittee, if you have an interest in the discussion around capital budget, if you have an interest in something else, you're, you're always free to... To, to jump into that meeting and be part of the conversation as well. So do you want to share how the committee? Yep. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So <laughs> so um, you can see that um, one thing that wasn't done was the board members that left were not taken off of this list. So there are some board members that are no longer on the board or former board members that are listed here. And so we, we do have gaps that need to be filled. And so the way that the process works for having people be uh, onto subcommittees is um, if I'm remembering it correctly, it's that person is, those people are put onto the subcommittee by the chair of the board. What generally happens though, is people will say, I'm interested in this particular thing. 
Mike has a proclivity towards engineering, and as a result of Mike being an engineer, he, he, he hopefully I'm not misspeaking, nope. enjoys the facilities subcommittee. Yes. Um, and so he's he's an active part of that subcommittee and other ones as well. So what I would say to everybody, if it's okay with you, is, is if you are interested in a particular um, area, whether it's finance, whether it's negotiations, whether it's facilities, or whether it is... Thank you. Program and program just for everybody's uh, knowledge is, is around instructional things. If, if we're going to create a new class or a new course, uh, we will come to the program subcommittee. We'll present that new course and usually just get the um, the informal approval of the uh, it's not like they vote on whether or not the class is going to be approved or not, but they basically just support the idea of that new course being put into uh, existence. We actually had probably about five new classes that we identified over the course of, of this past year, uh, over the course of this fall that, that we're going to have go into effect uh, for next year. So that's the program subcommittee. Um, with regards to uh, facilitators, on the second, uh, on the last page, it says uh, there's two facilitators that could potentially be involved with, um, with different organizations. EastCon is our local RESC, uh, our Regional Educational Service Center. Um, they service the needs of the school districts out in this particular area of the state. Um, there's five, I think, RESCs spread across the state of Connecticut, and, and they're all regionally. They support schools and districts in their region. Um, formerly, uh, we had a board member who was a member of their, um, the, the EastCon board. And I will tell you that the EastCon uh, executive director um, is a former RAM employee and a, and a, and a good colleague uh, to, to RAM. Um, he would love to have somebody from the RAM Board of Ed be a member of the executive <coughs> board uh, or board for, for EastCon. So there's a need there. Carrie already uh, serves in the capacity as the um, uh, the, the board's facilitator for, for Cave. Um, so just if you, if you want to think about, and I'll maybe send a reminder out in my week in review to board members, if you have a, an area that you're interested in being involved in, um, you can shoot me an email, Heather and I can have that conversation and we can go about getting people placed onto different subcommittees as well. Are the appropriate Zoom links for the various meetings that we, even if we're not, that we'd like to attend or something like that, do they, are they on the website? Where are they? They are, they're posted on the Board of Ed, they're posted on the school district website under Board of Ed agendas, agendas and minutes, and then there's a separate link for each one of the subcommittees, and then you can get into the link for the meeting. Okay. But if you have an interest in coming to one, you could just shoot, shoot us an email and say, hey, Colin, could you just add me to the calendar invite? And that's something that we could easily do. Okay. So that brings us to negotiations, and we, that's there's no one on that committee. Yeah, so, so, so um, we will have negotiations coming up, just to, to put on everybody's radar. We, we'll have negotiations with our non-certified staff and our um, <laughs> our nurses. This coming spring, I actually was just talking about this earlier today. Um, uh, so, so there will be a need to identify some people to be on the negotiation subcommittee. Uh, so if that's something that you have a, 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 an interest or proclivity for, it'd be, uh, well, again, let us know and we'll, we'll get you put on there. Okay, so then the policy committee, Carrie or Gabe? We have a meeting. Hi. So the policy committee, basically for the last several months, we have been reviewing all of our policies. I want to say last year we had, it was last year, right, Colin, that we had Perhaps. the audit from yes. the lawyers. So the wording is being adjusted. So we have our next meeting on, I believe it's January 9th. And at that point, we will review the policies that um colin and his staff have identified and see what we can bring to the table for next month's meeting that's all i have program and communication that's 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 you not oh yeah <laughs> that is us next meeting is we, we, yeah we can't yeah that can't yeah, okay <laughs> okay so perfect and then east con I don't know if there's a report from there. And yeah. Carrie, any report on CABE? There is really nothing on CABE. It's very quiet. Nancy sends us all 
all of those emails and I will reach out again and see if I can get them consolidated. I know everybody's inbox is hammered with them. But um, with that said, I do recommend that people do take a look at what webinars and classes are offered because they have some very valuable things. And I believe maybe one or two of the new members attended the new member day for CABE. It was, I think, at the Marriott in Rocky Hill. Um, I attended that when I was new and it was fantastic and it really helped me navigate as a new board member. Yeah, I attended, I, I did it 20 years ago as well when I was on another board. But, oh, okay. Yeah, you, I was on Andover's board for eight years, but I've been off for 12, so it seemed like a good idea to go back and <laughs> <laughs> see if it were over again. Did you enjoy the, the seminar? Yeah, it was well done. Um, I expected to be poured to tears, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it was it was well done. I enjoyed it. Well, I think they also talk about some important legal aspects of being a board member. So, yeah. again, I just I would recommend everybody kind of take a peek at what's being offered. Are we members by by virtue of our membership on this board? Is that how that works? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So the district I was sure I was looking around the website and you know they have all this stuff and I wasn't sure exactly how we the members. So the district pays a, a membership fee to to Cave and that is all inclusive of board members. Okay. All right. Well, that's good. <laughs> and that gets you a lot of the things, but not everything they've got. Like the policy service is separate fee. Yeah. From, from Cave, we, we use Shipping and Goodwin, so that. Um, that brings us back to public comment again. Hebron Andover and Marlboro community engagement and attendance at BOE public meetings is welcomed. <laughs> the public comment segment of the meeting agenda is set aside so the BOE may receive public comments. Procedurally, public remarks will be limited to three minutes and citizens will be asked to identify themselves. Because the BOE is limited by the Freedom of Information Act to discussing only matters on the agenda, the BOE is not permitted to engage in a discussion of the comments presented. Eric, is there anybody online who's expressed an interest? Okay. I'll say something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm get to say anything. So um, Michael Searcy, Middle School Principal. I just want to welcome the new board members. Congratulations and condolences. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to congratulate board members who are now more for our executive board. And we all look forward to working with you, myself, and my administrative colleagues, along with the staff. So look forward to a good year. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. The informational items are the um, 16.1 in your packet. Yeah, so, so we, we always like to just include information um, about any kind of upcoming um, events that are taking place. I'll just say um, the quiet of the holiday season is kind of behind us and we're not opposed to that uh, being the case right now. So there's not as much going on with regards to evening events. We had the play, we had the, the school concerts. Um, I will say I always encourage board members um, come to some of our sporting events. We haven't had a meeting uh, since our, our, our winter sports kicked into full season, you know, and um, it's a great opportunity to see some of the good stuff that our students are doing. Um, you know, we, we do have midterms coming up, which is uh, causing, you know, anxiety, I'm sure, maybe in some of your households with uh, with kids that you might have in the, in the school district. Um, but there's always there always seems to be something going on here. Um, but, uh, you know, and, and if you're ever interested in attending anything, please, please join us. And the 16.2 is a student discipline. Report. Yeah. So just just uh, just for everybody's knowledge. So. Um, this is just information. It's it's high level information that's provided to the board at each board meeting. Uh, it just provides information about uh, student discipline. Um, it, it enables us to look at patterns, trends, anything like that. We I can't really speak about any of this. This is just high level information that we provide. I can't really get into obviously individual student disciplinary data, um, but it does just provide our number of in school suspensions and out of school suspensions. 
by month and by um, uh, infraction, I guess I would say. Um, and, and, um, but I have nothing really to comment on it. For this month. What happens in October? I'm going to shoot up in October. <laughs> The quiet of September comes to a conclusion, and sometimes Halloween. That really is Halloween. Yeah, I can't. You know. But then December, there's. Well, we didn't report December because this was. Oh, like okay. we we, yep. we we always report a month back so we can give the full information. We didn't um, didn't have it. At the is time. the first column the total, or is it just closed? Yeah. I, I'm just curious. I'm trying to read. Correct. That. So that's the so so the first the first column to the left is the number of suspensions. Yeah. And then the second column is the number of days. So sometimes you might have one suspension, but it could be for two or three days. So just for November, I just it says two for November, and then conduct two, and then vaping two. Does that mean? Is it should it be the 29 days? Seems kind of a lot. <coughs> yeah, almost 15 days per student. Is that 15 per? Yeah. Which one are we looking at? I'm just looking at November. I'm like, whoa. We don't so November is two. And then, and then oh. uh, yeah, it's mid middle school. Yeah, I got it. So it just seems. Oh, it's high school. Oh, uh, high I could, school. Yeah. I could, correct. I, the maximum number of suspensions, that, the maximum number of days that you can give in a suspension is 10 days. After oh. a 10 day suspension, it's essentially an expulsion. Okay. I'm going to check on that. And find I, out I, it, I, it's, I was it's, just, it was just more curious. Don't yeah. put any at work into it. It was more of a, the number of 29 sort of jumped out at me like, whoa. It's likely an error. I would say it's a typo, but I can think. Yeah, if you want. You got enough to do to worry about that. Well, not until you open it back up for the next report. Okay. Add my notes. Okay, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Okay. The second? Second. second. Okay. Any discussion on that? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. So the meeting's done, Eric. Oh, did I? No, you're good. You did everything.